You know, there's some people in this world who just don't know how to sit still. And guess what? I'm one of them. So it's not a strange thing for me to wake up on a Saturday morning like I did this week and just decide I got to get out. So, you know, you definitely got to have your coffee. At least I do before I get ready to head out on the road. And I said, OK, we're going to get this thing going. And yes, I know I closed my coffee pot kind of aggressively, but it's OK because I just want to make sure that I'm ready to get out there and do what I need to do. <laughs> so normally I do it black, but you know, I figured it's Saturday. I can, I can put a little extra in there and whatnot. And, uh, I happen to love this cup because it keeps my coffee the exact perfect temperature. Also want to shout out real quick, B Leaf sent me this shirt. Well, I paid for it, but sent me this shirt and I love it. It's so comfortable. And I just think you guys ought to go check out their site. I'll drop it into the comment section on this video so you can see. And without a whole lot of production, it was time to hit the road. I decided I was going to head south. I live in Arkansas in Little Rock, as a matter of fact, and I decided that this particular morning, I wanted to head down to McGee to go visit a museum that I happen to think is a fantastic way to spend a great Saturday where I just needed to get out. So I decided I was going to take one of the back roads of Arkansas. So this is Arkansas 65, also known as the Delta Rhythm and Blues Highway. It's one of the really cool things about living where I am. It doesn't take a long time to get anywhere in Arkansas, really because I live in the central part of the state. So the reason that I had to go ahead and do this trip is that I was tired, y'all. I had a long week and I just needed to have some time to get out and have a change of scenery. I love going through small town Arkansas, going down into the Delta. It's just something about it brings me a whole lot of peace. And then I saw, oh, wait a minute, there's another museum I need to check out in Deshea County. Hmm. <laughs> Another thing about Arkansas is that we grow a few things here, y'all, and there's a lot of cotton down south. Yes, we still grow cotton. Rice, soy, too, but we definitely grow a little bit of cotton. And I got lucky. On this trip, I happened to see a crop duster as it was going by, <laughs> so it was really cool. So right now I'm here at the Jerome Rohr Interpretive Museum and Visitor Center. And this is the World War II uh, heritage site that was put up in memory of the two internment camps that were put here in Arkansas that not a lot of people know about. It's really important for us to know our history. And I'm really happy when we take the time to actually pay tribute and you know overlap our priorities too one thing I've loved about this place since it first opened I remember when it first opened uh, and I came down is that this is an old train station that was repurposed to be a museum both for the Missouri Pacific Railroad site that it is and also to pay honor to something that was not a particularly proud moment in U.S. or Arkansas history. Here's another reminder that, you know, COVID has really changed things. This museum is already pretty much off the beaten path. And so now, with everything that's going on, they definitely are not able to be open. But there is a website, so you can see some of the things that this museum was set up to go ahead and preserve. During World War II, there were a number of Japanese and Japanese Americans who were forcibly relocated into internment camps, and Arkansas happens to be home to two of those camps. In fact, these two camps are the ones that were the most eastward located in the nation. I think it's certainly worth pointing out that for one thing, this building is not small. Check this out. This is one end of it stretching all the way down. But I'll tell you, these tracks still work. Because as you can see, there's a Union Pacific train sitting right there. And if I had my way, we would get passenger rail back, restored through towns like McGee. But look at this, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a great day for this too. Here's a view from the very front of the building. And I want you to just really appreciate 
just how large of an imprint this building has. I was kind of hoping somebody might have left some blinds open so I could get you guys some shots of the inside. I'll have to go back through my photos. I know I have some shots of when I came down here when they first opened up. So you can see what some of the displays look like though. You know, there's no replacement for actually coming here and seeing it in person. But since you can't, I might say, can I find something? Now that's some nature I don't want to mess with right there. So this side is the uh, depot museum side. So one side is actually for the World War II memorial of it in the museum. And then the other side is actually a railroad museum, which of course is not open right now. But through the magic of a little bit of ingenuity, I may be able to get a better view of this with a picture than with a video, but well, the video's not too, doing too badly. Thankfully, this glass pane is very clean. You can see the inside where they preserved some of the artifacts from when this was a working railway station for passengers. I'm trying to get all the angles that I can from the outside. I hate that we cannot go inside and see all this. But that's okay. Doing the best I can. I also love that there's a little garden over here at what you call the front of the depot, which is off of the side where the Depot Railway Museum is. Now I want to go check out this uh, garden that they have over here. So apparently, according to the visitor guide, these trees have a significance, which I'm going to go look up and I will put that information down in the description of this video. But these trees are not just here all willy-nilly, they have some kind of a particular purpose. Either these or the ones that are over at the street, but I will find that out. Because the ones on the street actually look like they might be um, of a particular Japanese species that I've seen before. But I'll check that out. But it is a very serene kind of feel that you get from over here. So well, let's see what's going on over here. For a Saturday, I'm a little surprised more people aren't out, but then again, no, I'm not. I think it's perfectly fine to come out in cases like this because you got the chance to be able to distance. It's a pretty setup. You can walk around. I don't think anybody would bother anybody, but this is the gazebo I'm hoping that this is something that they're going to be able to do more events with when we're able to get back together again because this is a really nice setup most people wouldn't even think that something like this would be here so you know it's, it's not a huge gazebo but it's good enough to be able to set up a band of some kind here and do a little something and it looks like information inside of here too. Let's see. This project, funded in cooperation with the Heritage Conservation and Recreation Service, U.S. Department of Interior, and the Arkansas Department of Local Services. I like that. That makes the fundraiser and me happy. Look at that. I told you, that building is huge. Remember, left side is the train museum, and the right side is the World War II Japanese heritage side commemorating the memory of those who were unduly interned in Arkansas during that period in our history. Flags are at half mass right now because uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed recently. Yeah, those those are the trees. Those have to be the trees right there. So I'm going to look up the information on it so I can speak on it intelligently. But man, this is just really peaceful. Well, let's go check out the train. Okay, one of the things that I absolutely love about these little adventures I get to take is that I've always wanted to have the kind of schedule where I could go and just explore whenever I felt like it. Unfortunately, I can do that now. Hopefully, y'all can hear me. This is very much the downtown of McGee, so I can't control that. But as I'm looking at this, Oh, I love plaques. I love a good plaque. 
Claude E. James, American Legion, post 79, 75 years of service to the community and its veterans, 1994. I love a good sign. I'll walk around and look for things that are put down in the ground and whatnot. It's great. So I was saying, I really wanted to, as a life goal, get myself situated where I could just go ahead and jump in the car and take an adventure. And I'm living that best life right now. And the couple of trips that I've done since the pandemic, I've really gotten interested in the whole train culture of it all, wanting to know more history about the role that trains and rail service have played in our lives. And the Missouri Pacific lines, very significant for Arkansas. I think it's really interesting that I found so many of these discarded rail cars in the most interesting little museums that you can imagine around the state. Apparently, many of these were just kind of discarded from what I'm reading, and those who are enthusiasts who are interested found ways of kind of pulling them back, sprucing them up a little bit, and then putting them on display at various little train museums and other related museums around the country. I found one of these in Arkadelphia as well, which they have in front of their actual working Amtrak station. So when I first got up today, I thought, oh, I'm gonna get up super early, and I'm gonna head down and all this kind of stuff, and had the whole day, and then I overslept. <laughs> and so now I'm trying to figure out what do I wanna do? I'm trying to meet up with one of my little mentees, but she's a ways out, so I gotta make a call. Do I go ahead and head out to one of the actual sites? Uh, there's a cemetery I know that was set up in memory of the internees who were here and that is in Rower, which is not far. But I don't think I've ever successfully made it to the Jerome site. So I'm gonna go check this map and see which is closer because I know the map has everything on it. Feels like walking back into the past, walking into this area. I can just imagine. How proud were the people of this region that they had all of this back in the day. They had their own train coming through their town. Alright, so according to the map, let's see, do they have it listed on here? Because I'm not actually positive there is something that is actually in Jerome, something that I could actually visit. And actually they don't have the, they only have the McGee based stuff on here too, so I may have to look at my other map and see exactly what we're talking about. In my research, I did manage to find some blueprints of how the Jerome camp was laid out, and this is the one that I was able to share. I'm so glad I came down for this. This is so cool. And you know, I love a good magnolia tree. It's a southern thing, y'all. <laughs> it's also getting a little warm out here. That's funny because it wasn't supposed to get super hot today. I guess this isn't super hot, but it definitely feels more like summer than fall. No trip to McGee would have been complete without me getting a chance to see my Deja Bean. She was home from college. And so I was really glad that the timing worked out for us to be able to uh, catch up. Of course, we were masked and socially distanced the whole time because she's in college. Yay! Okay, I'm having way too much fun down here at McGee. I'm just sitting here watching the train go back and forth. It keeps going forward and then reverse forward and reverse i need to go and push on the rower and uh then head back to home look at this look at this look at this I decided to pass on going south to Jerome and instead went back up to Roar so I could visit the cemetery. Saw one north for 12 miles. One thing I want to point out about traveling through the Delta region of Arkansas is that you have towns like McGee where there aren't huge turnoff signs and it's not a major national tourist destination. But what I will tell you about towns like McGee is that you have a lot of hardworking people who take pride in taking care of the responsibilities and as long as you are willing to be respectful when traveling through these regions you can have an amazingly beautiful restful peaceful time I worry about some folks who are like well you know they don't have this and they don't have that and 
that's not the way that you ought to approach going out and having new experiences. I love that I'm comfortable in just about any place, but the place I feel most comfortable is heading out to the country. I didn't think that about myself when I was younger, and I say that a lot more now that I'm getting older, but I really enjoy the slower pace of life of getting out of the city and just heading out to some place where I can just breathe. So this was a really well-timed trip for me, and I love that I have the ability to access this space at this time in my life. Coming out of McGee, I had to turn north on Arkansas 1 so that I could head up toward the Rower Cemetery. You know, it's really pretty subtle, but, and I'm not sure you can see it through the filming with the camera and whatnot, but if you look between the trees, you can see there's a rail line through there. And it kind of just hit me that these might be some of the original rails that carried the train cars that brought people here when they interned the Japanese during World War II in Roar and in Jerome, Arkansas. I remember the first time I made the trip to Roar. It was right after I'd had the privilege of hearing George Takei speak on his experience being one of those Japanese Americans who was interned during World War II. Mr. Takei spoke so eloquently about the experience and the significance of coming back to Arkansas, knowing that from his childhood, this was a place he was forcibly relocated to with his family, very much against their will, and that he can speak to this experience and help to educate those of us who did not live through it so we can have an appreciation for what was really going on then. When I arrived at the cemetery, it was a little later in the day than I originally had planned, so I thought it might be best for me to modify my plans a little bit, and so I did a driving tour around. Also, something else to know when you go off the back roads and you're back road tripping, the ground was a little soft, so it let me know it had rained a bit, not that day, but in the days leading up to my trip. And when you drive a little low, riding car like mine, you really don't want to run the risk of your car settling down into the mud and then you have to figure out how to get out of there. I do not have four-wheel drive. So I hope that you all enjoy the experience of being able to go on this driving tour. I don't think anyone has a driving tour of the Roar Cemetery yet, so I may be the first. Who knows? Let me know if there's someone else who has one and I'll add their link to my description. There was a bit more road that I could have explored, but like I said, I have a two-wheel drive a car and not a big truck with four-wheel drive, so I thought it prudent that I go ahead and turn around and head back on. So as I was leaving out of the space, I was thinking back to many of the pictures that I have seen of what this land looked like back when it had rows and rows of these barracks where people were housed during the internment period. And it's just, it, it always kind of leaves me speechless. Since I didn't get out, I did decide to go ahead and pull a couple of pictures uh, that were available so you guys could see a little closer view of the cemetery. When I have walked those grounds, I can tell you, it it's something that commands reverence. It does. This was a picture I found in some of Arkansas State University's uh, records from that period when they were bringing in families to the camps. 
I think it's really important that we not just think of these as historic events. We have to put the faces to these bits of our history so we can appreciate what transpired and make sure that we do better as we move forward. As I was pulling out Continue of the on Arkansas 138 side, for seven miles. I noticed that there seemed to be a trail there that I hadn't seen before in any of my previous visits. And I said, hmm, this is interesting. And it was running along the road as I was heading north on one trying to hit my connector. So I pulled over in Tiller, and this is what I saw. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, the reason I didn't tarry in that space is that while Google said that was part of the historic site, in fact, that's the area in Tiller where the hospital was, there really were no signs to show me that uh, Arkansas Heritage or Arkansas State had done any cultivation. And there was, in fact, a sign that said, private property, do not enter. So I like an adventure, but I said, let me not go ahead and risk being someplace I ought not be. Now I'm on my way back to Little Rock. That was fun. Kind of wish I had gotten a chance to get out and walk, but because I think I need to get back home. Something's just telling me I need to go ahead and head back now. Y'all see this water? How high it is? when I was little I used to think that I was a city girl and I realize now as I'm older I really am a country girl I this is so beautiful to me I love the wide open spaces of it all I'm also really glad I got over any kind of hesitation about doing any solo travel I mean you have to be prudent as anybody as a solo traveler but particularly as a woman you want to make sure you take precautions but I love a good adventure and I love being able to just go and move when I feel like it. with these roads when it's flooded do you see do you see how close up on this road that water is yeah if there had been a decent rain i'd have had to turn around and take another route don't mess with the delta when the water is high <laughs> and you don't know what you're doing <laughs> and you have a little small low to the ground vehicle like mine mm -mm, mm -mm. by design this was intended to be a day trip and so heading back I was kind of thinking man I would have liked to have stayed a little bit longer but I had to get back on 65 and so I rolled up on Pine Bluff pretty quickly like I said it's only about two hours away from Little Rock to get down to McGee I'm so glad that I'm in a place in life where I can take the time to just unplug unwind go to a trip and I think I'm really going to enjoy sharing with you guys some of my travels. I travel all the time. It's how I'm happy. And right now, I know there are a lot of people who are a bit uneasy about getting out and traveling. So let me tell you about some of what I did to try to lessen my uh, risk being out during this time where we're all dealing with the real practicality of COVID-19. I packed my own food. Before I headed out, I made sure that I checked to see where I would be able to go ahead and use the bathroom safely should I need to. And I made certain that when I went to the museum, it was uh, actually close to the public as you saw, but I knew that it was less likely that I was going to encounter a lot of people, but I did take my mask with me and I made sure that I was ready to go ahead and keep not only my safe, myself safe, but other people who were traveling along with me safe. As we figure out how to deal with this new reality of our world. So, hope you guys will join in with me for some of my other adventures. I have a lot of other places to show you in my adopted state of Arkansas. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope you subscribe and come along with me.